conflict resolution in the 16 and 1700s. Uh, our topic is on the fights between the Catholic Church and the scientists of the era. Um, and we're going to look at how they attempted to solve this issue. Now, before we get into the topic, I do want to tell you that sometimes this is how I feel as a teacher. Uh, you've got the, the Stone Age guy who's promoting wills, and you've got a crowd of people saying no wills. Um, now, this is not to say that people don't want education. It's, it's more along the lines of how I feel as a, a teacher that wants to bring in new things to the classroom, and sometimes we want to do new things and try new ideas, and it seems like everybody's saying no. Let's just kind of do things the way we've always done it. And that's the same problem the scientists were having during this time period. The scientists were beginning to come up with new ways of seeing things, new ways of understanding the world, and yet the church was saying, no, we, we want to just kind of see the world the same way we always have. Now, please remember, in sixth grade, you talk about the fact that the Catholic Church dominated medieval Europe, or the Catholic Church dominated the Middle Ages in Europe. It was considered the most powerful group in the world, and they were able to get by with doing whatever they wanted to do. They were the only answer to all questions. If you had a question about life, you went to your priest and you asked your priest to answer, and the priest would tell you what you were supposed to do, and you had to take his word as gospel or as the answer. If you had a question about your your master, the guy that owned the land that you were living on, you would go to the priest and the priest would give you the answer, and you had to listen and do what he said. And sometimes it was hard on the people, and they wanted new answers. So today we're going to talk about this quest for answers and and how people began to change where they got some of their answers from. Now please understand, this lesson is not meant to be against the church, and it's not meant to be against science, and it's not meant to be for the church, and it's not supposed to be for science. It's just to look at how people got their answers. Um, it just so happens there's been a recent issue between the church and, and science guys. A few years ago, 2010, the smartest guy in the world today, Stephen Hawking, uh, went on record as saying that the universe could have created itself. There was no need for God. And basically that's saying, you know, there's no God, that the universe just kind of made itself. Now, you could question that, and you could say, well, you know, Mr. Simpson, he may not be as smart as you think he is. Um, but we're not here to question his beliefs. He's entitled to believe what he wants to. He's a smart guy. Well, churches, they didn't appreciate this. And a lot of churches got upset with Stephen Hawking for saying this. And they just said, you know, ignore him. He's some quack. And if that would have been the way the church would have dealt with this issue 400 years ago when these scientists started coming up with their ideas, we may not have had the, the problems that we're going to have to discuss today. But in church, instead, the church chose some other way of dealing with this issue, and it creates a major problem. So how does this work? What was the deal? A lot of the scientific ideas that we discussed earlier in the week uh, that were being come up with, they questioned the teachings of what the Catholic Church was saying. You know, you look at Copernicus, and the church taught that Ptolemy was right 2,000 years ago that the Earth was the center of the solar system and everything revolves around the Earth. And they had some reasons why they believed it. They had some, some decent reasons for the time for why they believed that. But then Copernicus shows up and says, no, the sun's the center, and we circle around the sun. And this really bothered the church because they were the answer. They were where you went and got answers from, and now this science guy is trying to say no, they're, they're wrong. And so the church began to worry a little bit. And there's a major thing you need to understand about churches and about science. Churches, like any religious group, say that you've got to accept things on faith. And faith is great, and faith is essential for a, a religious movement or for some belief in God. You've got to have faith. But science doesn't deal with faith. Science deals with facts and what's absolutely provable. That doesn't make science right, and that doesn't make the church wrong. It's just a difference in perspective. Science deals with what's absolutely able to be proven, and religion deals with what you just believe in. And maybe you're right, and maybe you're wrong, and there's no proof. Well, the Catholic Church taught that everything had to be accepted by faith because that's what churches do. But scientists didn't like this, and scientists wanted to know things. 
the church didn't appreciate the scientists coming up with all these questions and, and trying to say they were wrong. And so the church and science were heading towards a big clash. And like I said a few minutes ago, in today's world, it wouldn't be a problem. The church would just say, you know, ignore that guy. He's, he's crazy. And the science guy would probably say the same thing about the church. But remember, during this time period, the church had almost absolute power. And so if you question the church, then the church could have you arrested. Uh, in sixth grade, we talked about the Inquisition. They tortured people. And, and then kind of the end result of the Inquisition, they actually killed people. And so scientists were actually risking death just by coming out and saying, hey, the sun's the center of the solar system. And then church jail guys show up and arrest you and kill you. Uh, so it's going to be a major issue. Not exactly the way we would say for you to resolve your problems today in seventh grade. The Catholic Church began to think that scientists were actually threatening their power base. Now, please realize in middle school when we talk about power, we don't mean like, you know, flip the switch and then the power comes on. We mean like power over people and, and power over life and things like that. And power, it's tricky. Um, there's a really famous quote that power corrupts. In other words, power makes you do bad things. And absolute power or total power like the church had corrupts absolutely, um, makes you completely bad. And during the Middle Ages, you know, the Catholic Church is a really good example of this in a lot of ways. Now, they did a lot of good things during the Middle Ages, but it had become very corrupt, and they were killing a lot of people uh, for nothing and arresting a lot of people for nothing. And, and so the Catholic Church begins going out, and they start doing these things. A wise man in a movie <clears throat> once said that no one who gains power wants to lose it. Uh, that once you have power, you fight to keep it. And the Catholic Church during this time period was definitely fighting to keep their power. That movie, in case you don't realize, was Star Wars Episode III. Uh, and, and Palpatine, the bad guy in Star Wars, actually says it. But it was a wise statement, and it really works with how life works. So, the stage was set. And I've already told you that the church would arrest people and kill people that disagreed with them. But I want to give you the most famous example. Um, it's... It's a fun example. We've got Galileo, you know, he of the telescope borrowing. Um, and Galileo used his telescope to prove a lot of things about space that the church didn't really like. Uh, for example, he proved the fact that the sun is really the center of the solar system. He also, as this picture illustrates, showed that the moon had craters. Uh, the church during this time period was teaching that the, the moon was eternal and that it was all of that. Uh, so they didn't really buy into the moon having craters theory and they didn't appreciate Galileo's brilliance and, and intelligence. So he gets arrested at 60-something years old, and they put him on trial, and they tell him that he has to recant, or that he has to admit he's wrong, or he's going to be punished. Well, at first, Galileo stands up for what's right, and, you know, says, hey, I'm right, I hate to tell y'all. Uh, but when it finally gets down to brass tacks, when it finally gets down to uh, recant or die, uh, Galileo gives up and says, sure, I'm, I'm wrong, y'all are right, I apologize must have hit my head or something. Um, at the end of the day, you know, he walks out and he tells the Pope that he's right, but at least officially for the court documents, he admitted he was wrong. Now, the rest of the world realized he was right about 300 years ago. The Catholic Church did not come out and apologize till about 15 years ago uh, for how they treated Galileo. Now, the really crazy part about this whole situation, and the really wild thing about it, Unlike Stephen Hawking, who I, I started off the, the discussion with, who said that God wasn't real, these scientists we're talking about in seventh grade, most of them were Christian guys. Most of them believe in the Bible. They believe that God created the world. And to them, it wasn't a question of disproving God's existence, but it was a question of trying to figure out how God's mind worked. To them, they were being good Christians, and yet the church uh, was killing them and arresting them. Isaac Newton, probably the smartest guy who ever lived, said it's the perfection of God's works that they are all done with the greatest simplicity. He's the God of order and not of confusion. Or in other words, God makes things simple and we should be smart enough to figure it out. Um, for some odd reason, the Catholic Church in this time period, they just didn't get this. Well, the results of this idea, although the church won, uh, you know, short-term battles, Scientists went out overall. Scientists continued coming up with new ideas after new ideas, and they began proving themselves right, and eventually the church had to say, you know what, forget y'all. Y'all are fine, do y'all's thing, we'll kind of let it slide. 
philosophers, guys who study life, guys who study things other than like science stuff, guys who wonder how life works, notice that the ch scientists beat the church, which was supposed to be unbeatable. And so these philosophers began to say, you know what, why don't we question the government, the absolute monarchs? Why don't we begin to, to try to change that and try to fix those problems? And so our next day of notes is going to look at how philosophers began trying to change uh, how government works. Um, and this is going to be a major deal because in America today, obviously, we don't have an absolute government, so you need to understand that's due in part to the fact that these scientists beat the unbeatable church.